Hello everybody and welcome back to Men's Day Out. Joining with us today is Dr. Somi Chatterjee. She is an assistant professor uh, law at the Noida International University. Welcome Somi, thank you for joining us today. Thank you ma'am for inviting me. Um, it's a pleasure. So Somi, to be honest, I came across a very nice photograph of you holding a book in your hand. Uh, and it said that you have done your PhD in the misuse of Section 498A, which is the anti-dowry law. And yes. thanks to social media, I was able to connect with you instantly. And I was very, very curious to understand why did you take up this topic? And I mean, what on earth made you take up this topic for an entire PhD research? So share with us, how did it all start? So, ma'am, uh, ma'am, this topic, when uh, I began my PhD in uh, 2016, so uh, this top, this sort of topic, you, it was not so much heard of that a woman is actually uh, taking advantage of certain law to uh, harass her own husband or in-laws. So, uh, on a, before I chose this topic, personally, when I was into conversation among few females, so they were just casually conversing between themselves that uh, I'm very troubled by my husband or, you know, I'm not happy. And uh, there are their arguments every day and uh, I'm very frustrated. So these sort of things generally we see in every marriage. So the, on the, on a, the other friend who replied was, it's all right. If you're troubled so much, just file a complaint and then maza dekna. So if in a normal conversation, if a woman even thinks of these things, because I don't think they even know that what is 498A and how the how harsh these laws are upon a person. And back in 2016, uh, these laws were, the nature of these laws were such that one simple complaint and the man will be picked up from anywhere putting behind the put it put behind the bars the kind of social stigma that was attached to uh, you know to the man the mental harassment that the entire family had to go through so sir, i started researching because this conversation it got stuck in my mind that what on why are these female actually are they even aware of what are they talking about so i researched a bit that what are the what is what research is going on? So I found this is completely a barren field. Absolutely no research, no. Uh, there are very few writers who are writing about this because everybody is writing about women atrocities. See, I am not denying that women are not being uh, harassed or they they do not face cruelty in marriage. They do, but on the other hand, there are even men who go through the same thing. So this was the reason because somebody had to take up such issues. Somebody had to talk about, you know, the, from, about the plight of men, what they go through. So I think, yeah, the medium was me. That's it. Right. And when you discuss this with your professors initially that, you know, you discuss that this is a topic I want to choose for my research. Uh, which would obviously carry on for the next three to four years. How did they react? Uh, was there any kind of apprehension that, oh, don't touch this, this might be a sensitive topic? Or were they very encouraging, uh, you know, towards uh, you taking up such a topic, which was not really heard of earlier? So, uh, when first of all, when I discussed with my professor and uh, the panel before me, so there was a bit of frown that... I mean, the, you know, the entire world is working towards one side and she's talking about the opposite side. So, and uh, one of the panel members, even uh, that person uh, commented that uh, this is not a topic of research. You can write a short article about it, but what will you research? So, and that person was not even aware, you know, this was coming from a female. So, 
the person the, these people were not even aware that what was going on so because nobody was talking about it there was nobody to discuss the man side because there is no law there is absolutely no law which talks about what happens when you uh, specifically misuse 498a i mean you know there are definitely uh, ipc provision general provisions but uh, no specific law which says that this is the particular uh, punishment the quantum of punishment if you misuse 498a right yeah so there was all and there has always been uh, whenever i discussed during my research or say survey and uh, whenever i went for an interview with people uh, there was always a frown or you know in their on their faces or uh, there was always a smile you know that okay this is a very weird and a very different topic so and i remember one of a very senior professor uh, he commented in jokingly he said ab to mahila mukti wale aayenge tumhare ghar mein tumhare khilaf protest karne ki ek female hi uh, matlab females ke khilaf kuch karne wali but that this is not against females this is against abuse against a certain law right unfortunately the females are the ones who are doing it right now tell us somi uh, in your research you would have come across different uh, you know types of cases and uh, you would have met different uh, types of men and when i say different i mean uh, different strata of society that they would belong to could you share with us couple of examples uh, you know telling us how this law is not only restricted to the urban phenomenon but it can be uh, you know with somebody who is not really educated as well uh see uh, the thing is that Uh, these laws are not when we talk about misuse of 498a we are discussing about dowry laws now dowry is a topic which is extremely extremely common it is not restricted to the upper society or the lower society dowry is kind of a you can say it is a tradition in india and in the village villages when you go into into the villages uh, they believe that जी यहाँ पे तो दहेज के बिना शादी ही नहीं होती है सो इट्स काइंड ऑफ अ ट्रेडिशन इवन इफ इट इज इवन द लॉ इज प्रोहिबिटिंग द गिविंग एंड टेकिंग ऑफ डाउरी नाउ व्हेन आई व्हेन यू सेड दैट इट इज नॉट रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू अ पर्टिकुलर क्लास ऑफ पीपल और जस्ट नॉट द एजुकेटेड पीपल सो इट वेन आई वॉज रिसर्चिंग आई फाउंड आई केम अक्रॉस द फैक्ट दैट इट इज बिकॉज अबाउट बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सपोजर दैट अ फीमेल गेट्स so if a female is a uh, graduate or say she's uh, attaining higher education in in a particular area which may be interior villages so she is between or among people who follow the same mindset follow the same mindset discuss the same things sometimes what happens is we see the uh, the interference of patriarchy is to such a level in those areas that they even they they in the, those areas you can say that women also follow the pattern of patriarchy that we are not we are not we are not thinking about this or something the exposure is such that they cannot think beyond the level now by when i say the uh, the level of patriarchy that means the head of the family is a is a man and who is like ruling over the rest of the family or the you know he orders to the rest of the family so whatever he says the entire family thinks like them on a general basis but that same female educated or uneducated even if she is not educated take for example she is not educated now she comes to a place like say to a city here here also she comes and she starts living in fairly a backward area in inside the city itself but in that backward area she meets various people from various backgrounds having various kinds of mental various you know sorts of thinking okay now even so what happens is when she is exposed to a larger thought uh, process or thinking tank or think tanks you can say 
so what happens is she starts thinking in a different way the exposure she 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 gets to know about certain rights that she even have that ki acha aisa bhi hota hai i can also fight for my rights acha mere pati ne mujhe chaata mara to main uske khilaf police complaint bhi kar sakti hu so she comes to know about all this which she had not been exposed to when she was in her village area so education has nothing to do with use misusing of 498a this kind of cases are uh, filed by a a woman who is uh, a, you know she she is she belongs to a doctor family she herself is a pediatrician her husband is a, a you know a heart surgeon a cardiac surgeon so they are well to do a well well of family well educated family this we see cases in their their uh, in those families now we see cases of such kind uh, say uh, a sari seller okay so he is also a victim of uh, for i miss use of 498a where his wife he uh, she threatened him on a daily basis that uh, if you do not uh, pay my father this much of money you know to uh, for a certain purpose then uh, the, uh, you know then you see what i do then i'll go to the police and say that you know you took so much of money from me during my marriage and put you behind the bars and then again you come to the next uh, status of the society which is a housemaid uh, you know she works as a housemaid and now she is threatening her husband ki um, no dobara just maybe some i maybe she is doing it to save uh, the household or something like that but i'm just telling you the way people are talking in casual manner about this loss ki dobara uh, pee ke ghar aaye to dahej mamle mein tumko jail mein jail mein dal denge so even a housemaid is aware of dahej mamle mein jail mein dal sakte ho so effectively you are saying that there may be issues between a couple there may be you know their domestic fights which are happening but uh, you know to fix the man a dowry law is easiest you know to kind of use against him or even threaten to use against him because as you said it is so simple that you just need to go and file a mere complaint that this man has been harassing me for dowry for money etc and he could be picked up and put behind bars so in a way this law has become a tool to kind of get away with you know whatever you want as a wife and the man has to give in uh, irrespective whether he wishes to or he doesn't wish to yeah and another thing is that uh, there were certain uh, long slowly from 2016 to say 2018 there were various cases and heard in the supreme court so there were uh, supreme court started recognizing that this is a serious issue and so there were certain uh, changes certain guidelines so what they do is now the police officers what they do is they send a notice to the person that come and meet me and you know there are certain things that they prepare a checklist and uh, if the person is not arrested for what and it is not are not arrested if then for what reason they are arrested so the police people they have the, uh, you know the checklist and accordingly they have to conduct the investigation in such case another another thing is that the investigation officer that a recent judgment uh, a few days ago um, it came out in west bengal that it was found that the investigation officers are not doing or implementing their duties in correct manner so again the same thing hap- is happening you you are you're talking uh, about the 41 acrpc notice yes, that yes, they need yes. to serve to the husband and only then yeah. he could be picked up he cannot be picked up uh, unaware like earlier how it used to happen that uh, let's say a man is at uh, his you know office uh, on a friday evening at 6:37 yeah. and the police would walk in uh, he is not even aware that his wife has filed a complaint against him pick him up and the courts are closed over the weekend so he would be in uh, jail for two days by default so unlike that yes. now the police is bound to give a proper notice in advance and only but as you rightly said uh, you know this is uh, very much in law but in practice there are a lot of places where it is not really followed in the spirit so I, i do Absolutely. agree with you on that aspect so yes, like, tell me, yeah. because uh, you know 
uh, as women i mean uh, you know we do understand that there will be you know situations for many wives that you know uh, and there will be genuine situations uh, which we cannot deny that dowry is a problem now what do you think is the biggest flaw with section 498a because there is this whole argument that just because a law is being misused you cannot scrap it or uh, i mean you know you can have various debates around it but you cannot really scrap the law so what do you think is the biggest flaw and how can we address this so that the misuse can be curbed uh see these laws came during a time when uh dowry crimes were at its peak in the 1980s early 1980s 1983 1986 so this period so this is what this was a time when though we had a parent act dowry prohibition act but it was a complete failure it could not control the dowry crimes we have to understand this that this was a time when there was a need for these laws okay the nature of the law is that it has to change with time and with according according to change in society so if a law is not changing according to the changing uh, say patterns of society or the changing pattern whatever is happening in society the law becomes say uh, a a kind of bad law i'm not saying this is bad law this is now the, why is you are saying that law is prone to misuse now if, now i have already had this discussion with many people that they say that every law is prone to misuse but why only we are talking about this law we have to understand this this law was created for the sole purpose of protection of women now women themselves are misusing these laws of taking this law as a shield to harass another woman like mother in law sister in law so this law is not just any other law now what flaw does it have that this is something which only targets which is only for say a married woman say a wife it does not cover uh from the opposite direction if the husband is facing so what then the law says nothing about but that cases and like you gave an example that the woman's family is demanding money from the husband and i'm not saying at the time of separation even when the power, you know couple is living together as family uh, you know the woman's brother the father there could be n number of uh, times that they would you know demand money from the husband to start a business or you know something of that sort so which is also yeah. not fair in a way absolutely and uh, when during my research i'll tell you uh, that when when i went to talk went to talk various police uh, stations and to collect their opinion because see opinion of the police uh, of the police officers is very important in such cases because the first thing they get to know about these things so what i got to know is 98% of the cases in 498a are exaggerated versions like in the heat of moment they want to the women want to take revenge clash of ego in fact you would have so, even seen the fir formats to a great extent they are nothing but a copy paste exercise and uh, you know there have been firs where the couple didn't have a child and you know it was just a copy paste so they actually you know wrote that oh our child had been you know abused or in fact i did a story from uttar pradesh where the father in law had died 11 years ago the before the marriage you know they were they were not even married the father in law had died 11 years before the marriage and even his name was put in the uh, 498 fir so in a way it's becoming a mockery you know of the law which it's was made to protect the women you are right uh the the woman name uh, say a father in law who is 80 years old who is unable to walk he is old ailing patient how can this person you know stand up pick up his stick and hit a woman in such a condition also uh, you know uh, 
a very distant relative who might have come during the marriage and after that that person was not seen anywhere even they are dragged in the person jisko uh, what we say in hindi is bicholiya jiski wajah se shaadiyan hoti hain even that person is dragged in so who is to, like what what is this law about is this for joke is this for protection so if we do not understand the gravity of law in itself it will bound to become a joke right so may let me ask you about some data because everybody you know wants to talk about data when we you know speak about the misuse so when you said 98% do we have data points which actually you know tell us that these many number of cases were filed and these many acquittals had happened now another debate is you know when you say acquittal a lot of women rights activists would say that acquittal does not mean that the case was false and probably there was lack of evidence due to which uh, the man and his family got acquitted so how can we really have some data points to prove how many cases are uh, falsely filed over a uh, you know uh, last four years five years down the line last four years five years i'll tell you is that uh, during what what my research was so if i'm researching about a particular district say gautam buddh nagar district and if i'm taking cases of matrimonial uh, cases which relate to 498a or say 304b ipc so uh, around 1900 cases were disposed of all right now in that 19 1900 or four cases or whatever the approximately 1900 cases we can talk about now in these this cases uh, say 75.4% of the cases were of of a nature where the witnesses were hunt hostile or the complainant herself became hostile by hostile i mean that when she went to file a case or a person who was filing a case or in a, or filing an fir her statement or their statement was completely different from what they were now speaking in front of the magistrate so because we know that when we say something in front of a police officer that is not admissible we have to say the similar thing in front of a for it to be admissible in front of a magistrate now they say that nahi nahi when uh, a, a person for example a woman is filing an fir saying that i uh, uh, that mere pati ne itna itna paisa liya tha shaadi ke time pe and even after marriage he was demanding dowry and he was hitting me he was taunting me and various other things so when she went and appeared uh, she um, uh, in front of the magistrate what she said nahi nahi mere pati jo mere mein bahut pyar karte hain and wo chhota mota jhagda ho gaya tha and uh, abhi kuch nahi hai so there is a difference right complete opposite so with the witnesses the, the complainant went hostile so do think, how do we let me play the devil's advocate here because these are the arguments which keep cropping up so when you say a woman changes her statement in the court do you think it is because she had filed a false case or do you think that there is any kind of pressure on her from the in-laws uh, due to which now she is uh, making a different statement at court the reasons can be various the various can the and the thing is that in order see i'm talking about acquittals and convictions so when say my husband is torturing me i need relief right now if i'm going to file if i'm going and filing an fir if i actually need a relief i have to stay strong i cannot see even if there are pressure ki dekho shaadi hai kharab ho jayega it is a fact that women are pressurized in that case but if we say that acquittals can happen in many uh, for many various reasons but we have to also see that we in order to convict the wrong doer the complainant needs to stay strong because the rate of conviction is so less in such cases as and i'll tell you men men convicts are more than female convicts even if a mother in law is an accused person in that court generally they acquit mother in law sister in law but accuse but they make the uh, husband the prime accused so why is so my thing is my point of view is that you have to stay strong because these complaints will only decide only complaint will not work because agar tum 
अगर कोई लड़की है जो सिर्फ मजाक चखाने के लिए कर रही है इट्स रॉन्ग इफ यू के नॉट प्रूव योर पॉइंट वट एवर द रीजन इज इट्स रॉन्ग so there will be you many are, reasons you know that she's taking her statement back one of course you cannot rule out that there is pressure but other is maybe the husband's family has given to her demands due to which she is ready to go back and live with them so it's like you know there you are i have kind of you know shown you what i can do and uh, i'm yeah. ready to withdraw the statement basis uh, you know whatever demands uh, have been fulfilled so there could be different reasons and every acquittal need not mean that you know the woman was was pressurized by the inlaws of course not of course not because see there was this uh, time when there was a question that how do you prove that these cases are false if a case is false how do you prove these cases are false because matrimonial cases every case is different because every uh, you cannot treat these cases like hi hey, say same hai ठीक है, they are not the same. They are not the same. Giving you an example, two thousand nine Nisha Sharma dowry case. She even went to Opera Winfrey show. And nine years later, she the court held that no, uh, you know the this case this case does not stand. But what happened with uh, Nisha Sharma? Did she get punished, or did she, was she penalized? Was she put behind bars for that? on the other hand the husband poor poor guy he was under trial for so many years in the jail yeah, almost mother in law lost her job yes yes what happened those uh, there was another in pune there was another case and i must mention his work uh, there was this book that i came across uh, i was alive but 498 killed me by amit bhandari his complete story of how was how he was harassed by his wife and and her uh, uh, family then there was there was various 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 examples like thousands and thousands of examples i can tell you right and naturally we can't discuss all of that on this interview <laughs> yeah. and uh, you have also come up with a book you know which has circulated uh, yes. all these uh, instances and cases would you like to share yes. some uh, details what does the book carry and how can one go about it uh, the name of the book is dowry laws and its misuse in india it's available in um, it, it's it's available there in amazon so the book is about uh, the concept of dowry the laws relating to dowry and the cruelty against men or the or the uh, misuse of anti dowry laws whatever the thing is that so it's divided into three parts first because the reader needs to first know what is dowry how did dowry come to india or what is exactly how did the dowry today that we know as how did it evolve through generations also if we are talking about misuse of dowry laws now they have to know what laws are we talking about what are the nature of those laws and then they will understand how these laws are being misused so yeah the book is relatively broad about that great and before we end dr chatterjee any last message to all the women who are watching this because i understand the kind of bash, uh, backlash that you would have also faced you know while researching yes. on this topic but uh, somewhere it is important for women to realize themselves that if we keep misusing these laws somewhere down the line it is only going to you know uh, hurt us and the genuine victims will also be treated or you know looked upon with an element of doubt so what is your message to these women who or even the lawyers who advise uh, advise women to file such false cases how do we you know really try and curb this menace uh to women who think about misusing these laws uh i will like to say that they are doing it either out of uh being influenced by somebody like lawyers do and this is the and lawyers they you know they don't really care about what is happening to the family the lawyers who are 
you know advising that you know uh, put this charge upon your husband and you will get what you want so that is that is that lawyer even trying to solve the issue i don't think so misusing laws for certain gain is not the solution to your problem if if you are if you are even uh, finding a way if you see that that i can take revenge or uh, i can uh, show him what i am this is not the mentality that a uh, that a woman should carry because i'll tell you something that if you are if you are actually tortured by your husband the law is for you the law is there for you the law will uh, the law will save you because that's what law does it's a very powerful tool for only for only those who are the victims of crime for offense but who think or who uh, take these powerful tools and powerful provisions of laws and misuse these laws it's only they are only harming themselves because the supreme court the court they are already aware that misuse is going on the uh, the police officers they are aware that misuse is going on and if you if they are trying to act over smart and you know some females are there that you know ki uh, exaggerated version because eventually you will you will know what is uh, you know how law acts because law is something which will never uh, say um, they will never you know it is always black and white it is never gray these cases or misuse cases are such that a woman is harming herself as you you are very correct you very correctly said the woman is harming harming herself because somewhere down the line it will not fetch her any uh, good uh, or you say a uh, any good result because the view of the society the judiciary the law enforcement agency has now shifted from uh you know ab ek aurat jab uh, aati hai police station wo hamesha sach bolti hai to ye ho sakta hai ye jhoot bol rahi hai can you see this shift of mentality i totally agree with you and it's not only in the 498 even the you know horrific crimes like rape i mean the you know yes. kind of false cases which are coming and you know it will be absolutely bizarre for somebody to doubt a victim uh, you know when somebody would go to register a complaint for rape and again it's the same pattern you know if these false cases don't stop uh, it's it's only going to kind of harm the real victims yes and in just on rape laws for example uh, say adolescent girls who who run away from their house and with their boyfriends and uh, when they are caught the the poor guy is charged on the posco even if the girl is uh, there with her her own consent if she is underage the guy will be charged under such crimes under such provisions in fact madras high court has uh, you know made a good citation on that few months back that we need to relook these law relook at these laws as well because you know a consensual relationship even if it is bit, uh, between the minors a law like poxco was not made to you know penalize a teenage boy uh, i mean there are different ways how to deal with you know those relationships but you can't make him a criminal when he is under 18 exactly so, anyways that is a different uh, you know topic for discussion but on that note i think uh, i must say that you have really articulated the nuances of 498a very well uh, and it's in a very balanced way because we are trying to you know project the misuse we are not trying to say that uh, you know women are not tortured or women are not harassed for dowry but somewhere Absolutely. we need to strike a balance where as a society uh, you know the laws can be in check and the misuse of these laws can be in check so thank you very and much. i will i will i uh, 
at last i will just want to add one more thing that uh, there was another victim it's on the records in the internet also uh, that there was a victim called diptansu shukla ex iit in case he was also the victim of misuse of 498a he proposed the lamp act which is red in reverse prevention of misuse of all laws it it acts like an umbrella so he proposed that you know the lamp or the you know such kind of uh, at least uh, the the law maker should try to come up with you know a, a separate uh, statute or a law which only deals with say uh, cases where misuse are happening so i would like also like to you know mention this this is also very uh, uh, important thing that i came across yes please sorry right uh thank you thank you very much once again dr somi chatterji and we look forward to reading your book and getting some more insights into it soon thank you thank you thank you so much thank you